on deck. Hand salute. Salute down. celebrating the feast of Passover for the 20th anniversary, all praises. <laughs> so for the royalty in the building and as a reminder, representing from the house of Captain Yan, we are going to start by some looks that are inspired by the plagues of Egypt. DJ, please. So, representing the plague of water, turning into Turn red. Next we have plague of frogs. Plague of frogs. Ribbits. Ribbits. Give me more, Sai Sai, give me more. Who baby girl is that? Ribbit, hop, 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 plague of frogs, 
plague of frogs. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Plague of frogs. Plague of frogs. Plague of frogs. Ribbit. ribbit. of livestock play. Come on, Brielle. Come on. Who doesn't like a cow print? Fire, 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 fire. Puff a jacket. Come on, puff skirts. Speechless. <clears throat> I don't know what to say. So I will start off by saying all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. This lesson is going to be entitled <clears throat> Highly Esteemed Among Men, an Abomination to the Most High. And that's going to come from uh, Luke chapter 16, which we'll read that. So in the opening, you saw a series of videos and, you know, Salakia, my apologies for, uh, you know, the videos being so long, but I wanted you to get a, you know, it's kind of like two, uh, three, four hours worth of stuff being condensed into just like some short videos. And I will, uh, you know, through the power of post-production, <clears throat> try to edit them down. Anyway, the first one, you saw the procession coming in with the, uh, <laughs> With the uh, all hail Bishop Nate march coming in, right? Which is none other than Bishop Nathaniel from the IUI from IUIC, okay? Which stands for Israel United in Christ. Which I don't know. That's that's crazy. Anyway, you saw Nate come in on his horse with his Afro puff and his possession procession of men looking like toy soldiers. Let's just go to it now. Which that's amazing, you know. 
I mean, it, it, I've never seen an Israelite that love himself that much. I mean, this dude is really, man, so proud. You know, it, I mean, it's just a, a damn shame. Now, I know people are going to try to justify it. You can try to justify it all you want to. You, I mean, we're not in the time for Israel to be lauded, praised, celebrated. And, you know, that's his wife right there, you know. And I'm going to keep it respectable. I ain't going to say nothing about her. All right. I mean, it is what it is. You know, you put your, you put your woman out there on front street. People look at her. They're going to say things, man. You know, they're going to say mean things. All right. But anyway, you see the maidens and the women. All right. All a blush. They see the mighty Bishop Nate, the new general of Israel coming in on his horse. And really, when you look at it, it reminds me of the Romans. That's how he looked at me with his cape. With the bands on his cape on the side, you know, with the with the look like armor almost coming in on his horse, and then his men lined up in rows like soldiers. It's like the Roman military is what it looks like. I mean, really, because you don't have a representation of what the Israelites assembled their troops. You don't have any any representation of that. All you got to go on is really just like with the you know with the Romans. But in any event, you see also the maidens dancing. You see them waving their flags and their uh, kerchiefs. <laughs> I mean, in the end of the day, it's, it's funny, the level of pride, but it's really not funny, you know? It's fucking sad, man. It's sad. I mean, but just when you think you, you know, you can't, it can't get any worse, it gets worse. And Bishop Nate comes in, he's got the procession going on, you can see the women, you see the children, the women in there, all, of, you know, all the blush, all the gas. You can't tell me that a bunch of Dutch don't go into that damn school, man. I don't care what you say. Look at the maidens dancing and frolicking. See, look like it's like a parade, and it's supposed to be the Lord's Passover. Now I know they're celebrating their twentieth anniversary too, but you probably should have done that on another night, you know, because at the end of the day, if you didn't start your school on the Passover, then how? Do, why would you be celebrating your twentieth anniversary on the Passover? That's that's curious to me, you know. And you see Nate get up there like he's you know leader of the people, got his Afro puff, and the ladies up there smiling, you know. Oh my gosh. Taking pictures, doing all that. The men got the shield of Abiel with the shield like they're ready to go into battle. Them shields ain't even real. I mean, what? I don't get it. Anyway, all they're going to do is say that we, we're hating and we, you know, whatever. We jealous. I'm not jealous. I wouldn't want to be a part of none of this shit. I would be embarrassed and ashamed because the, the Passover is not about any of us. It's about what the Lord did, his, his sacrifice, which the Lord was crucified on the Passover, which, um, Elder Apostle Rhymelob did, you know, a video on it earlier. And it was a very heavy, solemn assembly. It wasn't a time to be lauded and praised, to be looked upon as you these mighty warriors. And when you think about it, man, I took a, you know, I kind of went and watched some of the video. And this is some of the, and this is one of the images that I got, man. When you look at the people, I mean, I, I feel sorry for them because they're being led astray. Look at, look at their faces. You got different reactions on their faces. Like this one lady right here, her mouth twisted. She got on the big earrings. Look at this, this guy right here. He don't know what's going on. This dude here, he's like, he don't know what's going on. He's just glad to be there. You know, her, she just, you know, you already know what's on her mind. Look at this guy right here. This dude right here, he's black. <laughs> he is super, super dark. It's like, like Sudanese licorice. Good Lord. And then this guy back here, he don't know what's going on either. He's just there. So you feel sorry for the people because they're being led astray. But you know, at the end of the day, the most high does what he does and you know you got the, another video here they're showing in slow motion the maidens clapping and crying you know what they crying for they see bishop nate crying tears coming out he coming in on the horse she's smiling they're overjoyed look at the men back there you know she got showing her gum <clears throat> and she must be like an ephraimite or something could just be a, a mixed jake so-called mix i mean it, it's crazy and then we go to the passover I mean, the fashion show, right? Now, this is Bishop Nate's wife right here. I mean, okay. She's leading the fashion show, so you know whose idea that was. And then the thing about it that's spiritual is that this Passover, I mean, this fashion show, excuse me, the first few people that came out, and I, didn't, I only put about one or two of them in there because it was too long, right? I had about six minutes worth of video. I had to condense it because I don't want to make y'all sit through all that. You see this guy over here with it, you know, with the long dreads, the beads or whatever, the braids, like you about to play a clarinet or something. I guess they had a concert, then you had the first girl come out. So this fashion show, 
the first few outfits, the theme was the plagues of Egypt, which I find incredibly spiritual. Okay, incredibly spiritual. And I know that they tried to put a, a spin on it to justify it, but you can't justify this. This is completely worldly. And uh, Elder Apostle Gabar did a video on it already. I was thinking about it the day at work. And um, this was in my mind, you know, when the Lord just started giving me scriptures as a day. All right, once I got out of work and I watched the Elder Apostle Gabar's video, and I knew I was going to do, a, you know, a video too, dealing with this. And the Lord was just giving me certain scriptures to bring out. So, you know, I'm going to uh, go into it. Now, this young lady right here that came out, the plague of frogs, that first girl was the plague of water, supposedly, right? And then it was blue at first, then it turned red. You hear the mama say, you know, it turned red. So I guess that symbolizes the Lord turning the water into blood, right? Then you see this young lady coming out with the plague of frogs, right? This right here is Bishop Nate's daughter. Because you hear the mama say, whose baby girl is this? And when you look at it, she looked just like both of them. I mean, they, it's like they spit her out. She's a combination of the mother and the father together. You know, and I ain't going to say nothing messed up. You know, I'll keep it spiritual. But when you look in her face, you can see she looked just like damn Nate. Right? And I'll say this. Some of the clothes was all right or whatever. You know, because the ones that the men came out after, they were some badass clothes. But this is the thing. It's not the time for this shit right now. Okay? And just so we know... Let's be clear about it, because last year when we rebuked them about the Passover show, about the Passover fashion show, a lot of their um, students came on the comment board and said that was a different day. It wasn't the Passover. Now, you can't say that this time, because here's the steal. Passover 2023 fashion show. The first author of beauty. And I hate when Jake when Jake does that. They try to make a scripture that's in the, in the Bible, make it fit what they're doing. Let's go to it. The first author of beauty has nothing to do with a damn fashion show. Let's see if we can't look it up. Um, just just bear with me here. I'm gonna go pull out my my pocket for sword here. Author. See, and <clears throat> IUIC is known for doing that. Going off and then try to find a vague scripture to fit what they're talking about. Now, this is wisdom of Solomon. 13 and 1 it says surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the most high and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster, but deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world with you with whose beauty if they being delighted took them to be gods let them know how much better the lord of them is for the first author of beauty hath created them it's talking about the elements and the things on the earth that you look at and you're amazed by right the fire the wind or the swift air the circle of the stars you looking at you looking at them as though they're gods no it's the first author of beauty he's much greater than them and that's all it's talking about it ain't got nothing to do with a fashion show and, and bishop nate them is good for doing that shit so you see it here, Passover 2023 fashion show. So you can't say that it didn't have a fashion show on their Passover, which is completely going off. You can't justify it work at all. It's completely going off. The Passover is a solemn assembly, a very spiritual, heavy time, right? And our Lord was <coughs> crucified on the Passover. So, uh, or during the Passover, let's say it like that. He was crucified during the next day after the you know after the after the Passover feast, which is the same day, because the days begin at evening, and then it ended evening. So he he ate the Passover lamb, and I think the next day they put him to death, if I'm not mistaken on that. You see, but anyway, <clears throat> let's go on. So let's just you know deal with a, a scripture or two here, dealing with this. I mean, our issue is. The fact that hey, Elder Apostle Gabar was heated over it. And, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. I mean, it's just a terrible thing. What you're doing to your people, Nate. This whole fashion show nonsense. I'll show you some of the, those outfits. That was the plague of frogs. These were not pictured. This right here was the plague of the cattle. The girl came out with the cow skirt on. You know, this, that, and the other. Um, let's see here. Then you had another here. Uh, this is supposed to be the plague of boils with the bubble skirt and the bubble jacket. <laughs> then you had.
had this other one right here. All right, this is supposed to be the plague of uh. They say hell fire, but I think they mean hell stones. Fire coming down, coming down. Burn the runway, sister. <clears throat> yes, fire, hell fire. Have you seen enough? <clears throat> so. The scripture we're going to get, this is Luke 16, verse 13. You can see that just because they try to put a spin on it and say they were dealing with the plague of, uh, you know, different plagues of Egypt. No, which is incredibly spiritual because the Lord is going to bring plagues this time. You're not showing him honor. I mean, absolutely. At first, before we even get that and going back to Bishop Nate, he was honoring his own self. That's what he was doing. Let me see if I can go. Salakia. So I want to read John 5 and 43. Real quick, it says, I am coming my father's name. What's the father's name? His name is Yahweh. And ye receive me not. Yahweh Shai said he came in his father's name and ye received me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. And for the congregation of, of IUIC, you, you honor Bishop Nate because he came in, in his own name. He ain't coming in the name. They kept saying most high Christ, blessed God. I think I heard him out. Uh, you know, they said God in Christ. Uh, Bishop Kanai said God in Christ. See, they, they, you honor Bishop Nate on his horse. Not once did I hear them say Yahweh Shai. Not once. They ain't going to say that. Even when they prayed, when they did their opening prayers and whatnot, they prayed in the name of God in Christ. And then they honored Bishop Nate with an elaborate, you know, his interest in all of that. And even Bishop Nate, they ain't call on the name. They ain't calling the names of the Father and Son. And we've been around and around the world with them about that. They're never going to change. We ain't worried about it. I'm just going to keep it moving. So again, what was the scripture, man? Uh, what is it? 543, excuse me. John 543, I am coming in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. And that's a problem. You, won't, you don't want to honor Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. You want to honor whoever else. Whoever else. Let's go real quick to Luke 16. <clears throat> and this is the whole thing. See, you people, you take, you Israelites, you take a lot of stock. You love this kind of shit. You love them fashion shows, <clears throat> right? You love all that. Lord and praising men. Bishop Nate coming in on his horse with his procession and men and soldiers. Because that's what them women was getting choked up over. They was getting choked up over it. You can see him. Bishop Nate's wife is getting choked up right here. See? Why she getting choked up on him? Just, you know, him just coming in. You see the other women got pride in their faces. Like, yeah, that's how Bishop look at him. But what about Yahweh Shah? What about Yahweh Shah? What about Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? You've got men up here in the top. If we go back a little bit, if you look up here and, and up here, I don't know what the hell going on. They got men up there. I guess they're the security team. I don't know. They're looking for snipers. What? What? <laughs> it is what it is, man. You see Bishop Nate coming in. See that? See this type of stuff, this fashion shows and this, these people lined up. See, even you other Israelite groups, you'll see this shit and this is what you aspire to be. That's why you all got logos. That's why you all pattern yourselves after this. This is what uh, one body in Howard Shot. This is what they want to be. Bishop Jephthah want to get to this level right here. That's why he's changing up all all his teachings. They are trying to get get on the level with IUIC. This is what they want. They want that money. They want that fame. They want to have camps everywhere. You know, now General Yohanna them. They want to you know they want to do the hood type shit. They want to have something like this, but they want to do it in the hood way, black leather and studs. You see, you want the praise of men. This shit right here. This is highly esteemed among men. This. This passion show, I mean fashion, passion show, fashion show, the Passover fashion show, all that stuff is highly esteemed among men and women. You like this stuff. You see, you'll try to find a way there's nothing wrong with it. You will try to condemn us and say we being haters. No, this shit is going off. You should not be doing a fucking fashion show on the Lord's Passover. You should not be doing it, which it wasn't the Lord's Passover because they got the date wrong. But on their, you know, the day when they... They uh, celebrate or commemorate the Lord's Passover. 
You should not have nothing like a fashion show. This is the second one they've done that we know of. <clears throat> but you know, people, you're gonna continue to, to, to allow this type of shit. This is Luke 16, 13. And forgive me, brothers. So much I want to say. I'm gonna just hit the scriptures and then shut it down. Luke 16, 13. <clears throat> no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the most high and mammon. And whenever you look into it, of course, mammon is the god of riches. You see? Now, anytime you got all this going on, it's because of money. It's because of money. Let's just be honest. They want to show off. They want to show their, their, their uh, glimmer, their gleam, their gloss. Bishop Nate, Bishop Nate likes, to, um, likes to flaunt. He loves to flaunt. He loves to show himself with this mighty word. Then they also had a, a little movie. <clears throat> Well, well, you know, IUIC came down in the lightning, like seven of them, four, four, five, six, seven of them came down in lightning. Then they had a pattern after uh, 300, the movie 300, where he was fighting, he was fighting a dragon and cut the heads off the dragon and shit. Then they, they said the name Yahweh, but it never mentioned Yahweh Shai. So, I mean, it's a lot going on, man. Whenever you, but whenever you see all this, money is at the core and the root of it. Trust me. So you can't serve the most high in mammon. Verse 14 says, And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. <clears throat> and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. The Most High knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of the Most High. And, you, and when this, these things come up, Nate shows his men how to go to certain scriptures and try to justify what they're doing. That's why when you look at this right here, when you see this Passover fashion show, they got the first author of beauty right there. So when you bring it up, they're going to say, well, the most high is the first author of beauty. He loved our clothes. He loved this. He did which is stupid. We already didn't dealt with that. That's been crushed already. You can't try to use scriptures for your own purpose. Just like they're going to try to, you know, they, they Bishop Nate would probably go somewhere in the scriptures and show you when King David rode a horse or they had men. Or where it was told King Solomon not to multiply horses to himself. See, they had horses. You can ride a horse. Well, nobody said you couldn't ride a horse. The whole thing is you're not to honor yourself coming in on a horse like you all of that because your I didn't ride a horse. He was on a on a on a donkey or a colt, I believe. You know, forgive me if you know I don't got it right, an ass. You know, but I know a colt a colt was also mentioned. <clears throat> but the Lord came in on meek and lowly. He didn't come in on a high horse like that. You can see the Bishop Nate's missus right there, right? You saw her a lot during this whole thing. She got to be seen, man. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but the most high knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of the most high. A damn passion a fashion show, excuse me, I said it again. A fashion show and a procession of soldiers and troops and men coming in on horses that type of shit may be highly esteemed among men, but it is abomination in the sight of the Most High. You know, for many reasons. <clears throat> One being because it's supposed to be a solemn assembly. Let's go to it and read it now. This is, uh, let me just hold tight. Luke 16, I got to bring it up again. Luke 16 and verse 14, I believe it is. I'm going to start at verse 13 from the Good News Translation. No servant can be the master, Salakia. So no servant can be the slave of two masters. Such a slave will hate one and love the other, or will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both the most high and money. Right, you can't serve the Lord and money. So it's always going to be confusing. And you see that going on. That's why they don't call them the names. It all goes back to money. It says, when the Pharisees heard all this, they made fun of Yahweh Shai. Because they loved money. Yahweh Shai said to them, You are the ones who make yourselves look right in other people's sight, but the Most High knows your hearts. For the things that are considered of great value by people are worth nothing in the Most High's sight. And the Most High don't give a fuck about you coming in on a horse, about you celebrating your 20 years having a school, about a fucking fashion show. The Most High don't give a shit about that shit. And Bishop Nate, you are one of them to justify yourself. And then women just, they could, man, they was like, they was, man, I, I want to say certain words I can't say. 
they was all over them, you know, doing something all over themselves. Women was getting wet and they came in. You could see them. That one lady, she couldn't hold it back. Let's go back to it. See this red bone right here beside Nate's wife? Watch her. Look at her face. See? She like, oh, shit, I can't. <laughs> you see the other lady over there beside beside the, the bishop, bishop wife? Look at this one. She got pride on her face. And this one right here, man, look at her. Watch her. See that? She couldn't help it. She couldn't contain herself. Oh, Lord. Woo. It is what it is. The things that are highly esteemed among men are abomination in the sight of the most high. Look at these ladies. He's a celebrity. Look, she's clapping, jumping up and down. Who you think she's doing that for? You think she's doing it for the rest of the men? Look at that one. She's crying. Got the baby hair laid out. The bonnets on. Look at her. She's just grinning. Look at her. Mouth open. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at her. Chewing that gum. Look at her. Clenching her hands. Woo. Golly. Let's just finish off the lesson, Salakia. Man. So... I'm going to go here to 1 Corinthians 7. Let's read that. Because the Lord tells us you can't set your mind on things on this world. Right? And, you, and you're talking about fashion. Let's, let's, do, let's, let's do like the other Israelites do. Let's go. Let's find a word. Even though this word fashion right here is not dealing with clothes. But I just thought it was funny. The description came to my mind. This is 1 Corinthians 7 and 30. We'll start at 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives be as though they had none. What does that mean? You got to put all your energy into this truth. You can't take nothing above the truth. Your wife don't come before the truth. Your husband don't come before the truth. Right? Well, I'll I put it in the context of what the scripture said. They that have wives be as though they had none. Those brothers that got wives, she got to wait until you got free time. Most of your time going to go to the most high. Right? And they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. See that? Now let's go to the word fashion right here. Because they had a fashion show, but this is not the same thing. This ain't dealing with clothes. This is the word fashion. It says... Come on now. I want to play for it, brother. Strong's G, 4976, schema. Schema. Which look like the word schema is schema. It's for the word fashion in the Greek. And we will look it up for the IUIC people because they don't look up words too good. It says, the habitus as comprising everything in a person which strikes the senses, the figure, bearing, discourse, actions, manner of life etc a figure circumstance external condition the external conditions of this world passes away you worry about the outward appearance you worried about the outward man the outward woman that's why they had a fashion show because they worried about the outward man and that and that uh what apostle gabar calls the megalomaniac right the narcissistic bishop nate he said the way you dress Shows what God you serve. He said that in the past video. And we got all over him over that. Because that was going off. You worried about the outward appearance, man. But the Lord said, And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. You see? The fashion, the lifestyle, the trends, the manner of living, the outward appearance, that those things are going to pass away. And I would have to say, everybody is convinced that Bishop Nate is super proud. This is Ecclesiastes 10 and 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? What is earth? What, what does it mean? Why is one that's made of earth and ashes proud, man? Because you're going to go from earth back to ashes. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. You were taken from earth, and you're going to return into it when, you know, if we happen to pass away, which is what people do. They pass away, and their body comes dust again. Their spirit go back to the spirit world. Why is earth and ashes proud? Why would a mortal man be proud? Why would an individual that's under the curses be proud? You know why? Because of money. Because of a following. You see, because this organization is growing and growing and is growing continuously. And with that brings more money. Think about it. That's why he's so fucking proud. That's why he keep calling us bums and rapists. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. And what does covetous mean? Let's look it up right here. And we just read that. 
when you have a shot said well when the scripture in Luke talked about um <coughs> excuse me when the scripture talk about individuals uh it taught Luke 16 talked about the um talked about the wicked scribes and Pharisees who were covetous they were greedy for gain so it didn't give us nothing right here we can go and get it that's what covetous means being greedy for gain we know Bishop Nate loved money he loved money man good lord covetous having is showing a great desire to possess something belonging to someone else only a proud individual or covetous will, will call their fellow brothers who do the same thing they do even on a higher level and do it more, which we're talking about Great Millstone. We teach more lessons. We do more videos. We put out more content every day and every week than any Israelite group. Why would you look at us and call us bums? It's because you think you're on some type of level where you look down off your high horse at us. The idiot bum camp. I mean, that's why we stand your damn neck. The Lord got a sense of humor. He got us on the bottom right now, but we gonna, we, it's going to be all right. Covetous from Miriam Webster. Covetous, greedy. Acquisitive, grasping, avaricious mean having or showing a strong desire for especially material possessions. See that? Covetous implies inordinate, the subject of breaking the law. Covetous from Cambridge, wanting to have something too much, especially something that belongs to someone else. And the Bishop Nate, really what he wants is 100% truth that he don't have it. Brothers already been talking about him going off in Revelation chapter 6. Going off yet again, continuously going off in the scriptures. Here it is. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one set his own soul to sell. And we know that Bishop Nate sold out. That fucking 501 C3, that dude sold out. Because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. If the most I don't bring him out of that proud mindset, that those proud actions, the Lord is going to kill that dude, man. But we'll see. First Timothy 2.15, it says, now dealing with the fashion show and all this, all this shit was worldly. All you I see is they, they're all about glimmer, gleam, flash, you know. They, they, they're very proud, man. We're very worldly group. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. What are they talking about? And the pride of life. Them clothes, that fashion show, that high horse, right? All them damn garments. You know, with the gold trim. Everybody dressing alike. The pretty the women in there with the pretty head dresses on. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. You see? And we're just going to end it abruptly. This is James 4 and 4. <clears throat> ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of the Most High. And I suddenly got to get this. Um, uh, I got to get this other scripture. That back double we just read, but I want to get another one. Uh, <clears throat> and I couldn't remember what, where it was in Romans, but it is, it's in Romans, Romans 2 and 28. This is for all you people worrying about a fucking fashion show, worrying about your garments so much, worrying about your high horse and the way you look to others. The most high is more concerned with your inward man. It says real quick, Romans 2, 28, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew <clears throat> which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of the Most High. Right, and you can't get your, you trying to get praise from men, you should be out to get praise from the Most High. But <clears throat> you're not going to get praise from your Yahweh, Hashem, Shai, because you don't even want to call him his name. I'm telling you, man, more and more. Uh, I don't know. We'll see you again soon, brothers and sisters. All right, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.